In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at how to do pH calculations before the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, and after the equivalence point of a strong acid with a strong base titration. So let's get into the first calculation. The first question is, consider the following titration of 50 ml of 0.2 molar HCl with 0.5 molar NaOH. What is the pH in the flask before any NaOH has been added? So this question is asking us to calculate the pH of the flask before any base has been added. And we're given the concentration of the acid inside the flask. So knowing that HCl is a strong acid, we know that it fully dissociates. So the concentration of HCl after it fully dissociates will be the same concentration as the H plus ion or the proton. So to get the proton concentration, it's simply the same as the concentration of the acid to begin with. And to get pH, we just need the negative log of the H plus concentration. And that gives us our pH. So negative log of 0 0.2 molar, because that is a concentration of the acid, will give us a value of 0 0.69. Let's look at the next question. The question is, what is the pH of the solution after adding 3 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide added and the moles of HCl that was in the flask initially. So let's look at the moles of NaOH that we're adding. From the previous question, it said that our concentration of sodium hydroxide was 0 0.5 molar. So 0 0.5 molar is the same thing as a mole over a liter because molar stands for the total moles divided by the liter. And we have a volume of 0 0.003 liters. Doing this calculation, we see that liters cancel out because liters is in the denominator over here and the numerator over here, they will cancel out. And we simply are remained, remaining with the moles of NaOH. So we have 0 0.0015 moles NaOH. That's how many moles of NaOH are being added to the flask. Now let's look at how many moles of HCl was in the flask to begin with. So the concentration of HCl was 0 0.200 molar, which we will state as mole over liters. And our flask had initially an amount of 0 0.050 liters or 50 milliliters. Again, liters will cancel out and we remained with a value of 0 0.01 moles HCl. Now that we know the amount of moles we have of HCl and NaOH, we can move on to our rice table. A rice table stands for a reaction, the initial amount, the change of the amounts, and the equilibrium final amounts. So our reaction is HCl plus NaOH, and it's going to create a salt, which is NaCl, and water. We can see that this equation is balanced as well. So our initial mole amount for HCl is 0 0.01, and our initial moles of NaOH is 0 0.0015. We have no NaCl in the flask, and we have no water in the flask currently. So what's going to happen is NaOH is going to react with HCl, and we're going to produce a salt. So we can think of this as a limiting reagent problem where all of the NaOH is going to be used up since it's the limiting amount. It has much less moles of NaOH in the flask than we do HCl. So we're going to be losing all of our NaOH in the flask. And we're going to also subtract that value from the value of HCl because the moles of HCl is also going to be used to create the NH NaCl. So we have to subtract 0 0.0015 moles from both NaOH and HCl because they're reacting with each other. And we would have to add that same amount on the other side because this is what we're creating. And our E, which is equilibrium, is the final amounts of HCl and NaOH. And we're gonna see that we have 0 0.0085 moles of HCl remaining in the flask. We would have zero moles of NaOH in the flask. And we would also have 0.0015 moles of NaCl and 0.0015 moles of H2O that was created from this reaction going on here. 
Now, the important thing to, to realize is we have to figure out the pH of the flask. Right now, we have the moles of the acid in the flask. So we have to get the moles of the acid in the flask and change it to a concentration value to figure out what is the concentration of the proton. Likewise, we don't have to consider NaCl or H2O in the presence of HCl because the pH of a strong or the contribution of protons from the strong acid is so much greater than the contribution of protons from water and the salt does not contribute to the pH. So we can also ignore the salt. So let's move on to the next step. The next step is to figure out the concentration of HCl. And like the first problem we had went over, the concentration of first of HCl would be equal to the concentration of H plus proton. And we would then have to figure out the negative log of that H plus concentration to get the pH. So 0 0.0085 moles were in the flask of H plus. We'll consider it, we'll call it H plus now because we know that the amount of HCl is going to be equal to the amount of H plus. Our volume was the initial volume in the flask, which is 50 milliliters or 0 0.05 liters of HCl. And we added 0 0.003 liters of NaOH, the base, to the flask. And this will give us a value of 0 0.160 molars. So that is our H plus concentration. The negative log of this value would give us our pH. And that would give us a value of 0 0.79. So the pH in the flask, after adding three milliliters of NaOH is 0 0.79. And does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense because our initial pH was 0 0.69, which was a little bit lower, meaning it was a little bit more acidic. And now that we added a little bit of base, the base reacted with the acid and it caused the pH to increase slightly because we removed a little bit of the protons from the solution. The next question is, what is the equivalence point volume? And what is the pH at this volume? So the equivalence point volume is easily calculated by using the equation M1V1 is equal to M2V2, where the concentration of the first um, acid and its volume is gonna be equal to the concentration of the base times its volume. So the concentration of the acid was 0 0.200 moles over a liter or molar, and the volume was 0 0.05 liters. We said this was equal to the concentration of the base, which was 0 .0, 0 0.5 moles over a liter, times the second volume, which we don't know. The volume we don't know is gonna be equal to the equivalence point volume. It's the, it is considered the equivalence point volume because the moles on this side would equal the moles on this side. So to calculate V2, we would get 0 0.2 times 0 0.05. Liters would cancel out and we would be left with moles on top. And then we would be left with 0 0.5 on the bottom. And the units over here would be moles over liters and the units on top would be left with moles. Moles would cancel out. We would be left with one over liters, one over one over liters, which would be liters. And we get a value of 0 0.2 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.5. And that would give us a value of 0 0.02 liters, which is 20 ml. So, the next question is saying, what is the pH at this volume? So that's meaning after 20 ml of NaOH has been added to the flask, what is the pH? So let's consider our rice table. For all these reactions, we want to use a rice table. The reaction going on is HCl plus NaOH. That's going to give us NaCl and H2O. So what are the moles? I is for the moles. The moles of HCl we calculated before was 0 0.01 moles. And we know that the equivalence point volume was 20 ml. So if we want to quickly figure out what the moles of NaOH was, we know that the concentration was 0 0.5. And we know the amount was 0 0.02 liters added. 
and that would also give us a value of 0 0.01. So you can see this why this is the equivalence point because the moles of HCl is going to be equal to the moles of NaOH. So what's going to happen in this reaction? Well, NaOH and HCl are both going to react with each other and we're going to be using up all of both the acid and the base, leaving us with no acid and base left in the flask, only salt and water. Salt is not going to affect the pH, so we don't have to consider this amount. And we're left with water. And water, the pH of pure water, since there is no acid or base left in the flask, the pH of pure water is going to be equal to 7. Again, why is this 7? because pKW is equal to 14 plus the pOH. And if the pH and the pOH are equal, because we're at the equivalence point, we can divide pKW by two, and that will give us a value of seven. So the pH of a strong base in strong acid titration, or a strong acid strong base titration, is always gonna be seven at the equivalence point. Our next question is, what is the pH of the solution after we've added 30 milliliters of NaOH? So 30 milliliters is now past the equivalence point. So we're gonna be looking at a pH calculation that is at the equivalence point. The first step to do is always calculate the moles. We know that the moles of HCl is gonna be 0 0.01 because it's the same calculation as before, we had 0. 2 molar times 0 0.05 liters in the flask. So we know that we have 0 0.01 moles of HCl. But what about the moles of NaOH? Well, we had a concentration of 0 0.5 molar, and we have a volume of 0 0.03 liters, and that will give us a value of 0 0.015 moles of NaOH that is gonna be added to the flask. As usual, we're gonna stick with the rice table just to visualize everything that's going on. And our initial amounts would be 0 0.01 moles of HCl, 0 0.015 moles of NaOH. We have nothing reacted yet. Change will be what happens when we react. Well, in this situation, we see that now we have less amount of HCl. So all of the HCl is gonna be used up in the reaction and that same amount is gonna be reacted with NaOH. And we're gonna be left with no acid left in the flask, but we will have a little bit, 0 0.005 moles of NaOH left in the flask. Well, on the other hand, we just have to look at what is being added, but does the value of NaCl or H2O matter in this case? Well, since NaOH is a strong base, in the presence of a strong base, water is not really going to affect the pH, and a salt does not affect the pH in general, so we don't have to look at those. All we have to look at is the moles of NaOH we have in the flask. So the next step is to calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ion, since this is NaOH, and get the pOH and convert that to the pH. All right, so let's look at how we do that. So we have 0 0.005 moles of NaOH but we'll consider that the same thing as we having 0 0.005 moles of hydroxide, the hydroxide ion. The reason is NaOH is a strong base, so it's also gonna fully dissociate. So that means is all of NaOH is gonna turn into Na plus and OH minus. So if we have 0 0.005 moles of NaOH, we're gonna have 0 0.005 moles of Na plus and 0 0.005 moles of OH minus. So let's consider just looking at the OH minus as this is gonna be the one that affects the pH. So 0 0.005 moles of OH minus divided by the volume in the flask. We started with 0 0.05 liters of HCl in the flask and we're gonna be adding 30 milliliters of NaOH and that's gonna be a value of 0 0.03 liters and that will give us a concentration of 0 0.0625 molar. That would be our OH concentration. To get the value 
of the pH, we first have to calculate the pOH. And that's simply the negative log of the OH concentration, which would be negative log of 0.0625, which would give us a value of 1.2. pH is going to be equal to 14 minus pOH, and that would be 14 minus 1.2, which gives us a value of 12.8. So the pH, after adding 30 milliliters of NaOH into the flask, is going to be 12.8. And does this make sense? Yes, it makes sense because all we have in our flask now is sodium hydroxide. All the HCl was used up and converted into the salt NaCl, and so we only have hydroxide left in the flask. So since hydroxide is going to lower or it's going to increase the pH, we're going to have a very basic solution. Hence, we have a pH of 12.8. So let's recap what we learned today. So this is a strong acid strong base titration curve. And we can see that at the beginning of a strong acid strong base titration curve, we're gonna have a very low pH. It's gonna be very acidic because all we have is acid in the flask. And slowly the pH is gonna increase because we're gonna be adding base. So base is gonna be slowly be added and the pH will sharply increase until we reach the equivalence point. So the equivalence point would be where the volume of the base being added is going to be equal to the amount of moles of acid inside the flask already. So this is where the moles of acid are going to equal the moles of the base. And we can see that for a strong acid strong base titration curve, the pH is always going to be 7 at that equivalence point because we're just left with pure water. Now past the equivalence point, we're going to be having excess base. And that means that we're going to be having a very basic solution, right? And our pH is going to be very high. So you can see as we add more of the NaOH, our base, as we get past the equivalence point, we're going to have a very basic solution and a high pH. So let's look at one more question. A student has 36 milliliters of an unknown monoprotic acid in a flask. The student then titrates using 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide and notices a color shift after, 20, after 27 milliliters of the base was added. What is the concentration of the unknown acid? So a lot of times when we're doing uh, titrations, we are trying to figure out the concentration of an unknown solution. In this case, it will be an unknown monoprotic acid. So the first thing to do is realize we're working with volumes, concentrate, and concentrations. So the best equation to look at is M1V1 is equal to M2V2, where the concentration of the acid by, multiplied by its volume would be equal to the concentration of the base times its volume. So we're trying to figure out M1, the concentration of the acid. We're given the volume of the base and the concentration of the base, which is 27 milliliters and, 30, and 0.3 moles of any, uh, molar NaOH, and we're given the volume of the acid, which is 36 milliliters. So another thing to realize is when you have a color shift, it means that the indicator in your titration has changed colors, and that is based on an equivalence point. So we will assume that the equivalence point is the volume at which there's a color shift. So M1V1 is equal to M2V2, and we can get M1 by doing M2V2 divided by V1. And this would be simply 0 0.3 molars times 0 0.027 liters divided by 0 0.036 liters. Liters would cancel out, and we would be left with molar as our final unit. So M1 would be 0 0.225 molar. So the concentration of that unknown acid would be 0 0.225 molar. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Have a good day.